Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions 32 to 35 of the Green Booklet. This is a question about saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. So I think it's good to start off with just reminding ourselves what they are. So if I draw a carbon chain here, a saturated fatty acid will be saturated with carbon or with hydrogen. Sorry, it will have the maximum number of hydrogens on it that you could fit on this carbon chain. But if you had a carbon-carbon double bond here, for example, in order to make room for that bond to take place, you'd need to get rid of a couple of hydrogens. So unsaturated um, fatty acids have these carbon-carbon double bonds in them. So we've got a, a diagram here in figure one showing the structure of palmitic acid. And we've got a table here, which I've copied out with some other um, fatty acids and their chemical formulas. 32 says a group of three fatty acids that are all saturated is what? Okay, so question 32 is really asking, how can you tell by looking at something's chemical formula whether or not it's a saturated fatty acid? Okay, well, we've got an example here of palmitic acid, which is C15H31. We're going to be looking for a relationship here between the, the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens. And we can see fairly straight away that there's going to be um, this relationship here. And I'll explain why that is on this diagram. So let's say for every carbon atom, except the terminal one, we've got two hydrogens on it. For every carbon atom, there's two spaces for hydrogen in a saturated fatty acid with no double bonds in it um, until you get to the end where this carbon atom has the normal two, but also has an extra one because it's the terminal carbon. And that's where we get the 2n for the two on each carbon plus one at the end. So that's why it's CnH2n plus one. Now, if we use this uh, equation and compare the chemical formulae that were given above, we can work out which ones are saturated and which ones aren't. Okay, so changing the color here, let's go through each of the answers. So A says capric acid, stearic acid, and serotic acid. So capric acid is C9H19. It fits with our definition here, so it is saturated. What about stearic acid? It's C17H35. Again, that would be uh, 2N plus 1, so yes, it is saturated. And what about serotic acid? Well, at the bottom here, we do have the same thing here. So these are all saturated. So this is a nice one because you don't need to check them all. Um, a is going to be the answer for this one. 33 says the number of double bonds in arachidonic acid is what? OK, so we've worked out that general formula for a saturated uh, fatty acid. But if it's unsaturated, it means it has one of these carbon 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 double bonds. So if we add in one of these carbon bonds, what happens? Well, we remove two hydrogens. So if there are two hydrogens missing, that is a sign that there's one uh, carbon carbon double bond. So we can write this out and say that one carbon carbon double bond corresponds with two hydrogens lost. So if we can compare um, some of these acids to uh, their what they would be if they were saturated, we can work out the number of double bonds uh, that are present because of the number of hydrogen atoms that have gone missing. So arachidonic acid, we're told here, it's C19H31. If it were saturated, we'd expect it to have 2 times 19, which is 38 plus 1, 39 hydrogens in it, which means it's lost 8 hydrogens. So using this, we can say that there's going to be 4 carbon-carbon double bonds, and that's why the answer for this one is going to be D. Okay, great. If we're looking at number 34 now, it talks about how cottonseed oil contains large amounts of polyunsaturated fatty acids. When this oil is used to make margarine, the fatty acids are changed chemically in order to increase their melting points. One change that would achieve this would be what? Well, if you think about what um, can determine the melting point, it's these intermolecular forces between these fatty acids. So how does the structure of these fatty acids affect this? If you have a completely saturated fatty acid, you could draw it basically as a straight line here. Um, but if you had one with some double bonds in it, and I'll just draw this out a little better, you can see that there would actually be a bit of a bend because you have this carbon-carbon double bond. It will change the bonding angle. And you get these molecules that can be all sorts of different shapes depending on where the bonds are. Now, why does this matter for the melting point? Well, if you have a number of these uh, molecules all together, they're not necessarily going to 
sort of uh, gel well together, you're not going to get much contact between the molecules. And the surface area that each molecule will be um, exposed to another molecule is going to be less in um, saturated, sorry, it's going to be less in unsaturated um, fatty acids because they have these weird bends in them. It just means things can't fit together nicely. Whereas if you had saturated ones, you get good contact between them and you get good van der Waals forces. Um, whereas if you have these unsaturated ones, uh, the weird shapes sort of get in the way and it means it can't. So that means reducing the number of double bonds in the hydrocarbon chain would mean that the chain gets a bit straighter and that you get a, a sort of better tessellation uh, between all the different molecules. So the answer for this one is going to be C. 35 says the iodine value is a measure of the number of double bonds in a fatty acid. One molecule of iodine reacts with one double bond. The iodine value is the mass in grams of iodine that reacts with 100 grams of the fatty acid. The iodine values of capric acid, gaelic acid and arachidonic acid are in what order? So really the iodine value will be greater if there's a greater number of carbon-carbon um, double bonds. So we're looking for the order of the um, acids uh, in order of how many bonds they have in decreasing order. So we have three options here. Capric acid, which is the one at the top here, we've already said that's saturated. So it has um, no carbon-carbon carbon double bonds. So we can rule out um, A and C because we know it will have the least. And then what about uh, gaetic acid and arachidonic acid? Well, uh, arachidonic acid uh, we know has it, and I'll just write this out here. We you know arachidonic has it carbon carbon double bonds, sorry, four. And we know that capric has zero. And what about gaetic acid? Well, if we look at our list here, we can see that it is um, C15H29. Um, and so it's missing two hydrogens, which means there's one carbon carbon double bond there. Um, so we say gaetic is one carbon carbon double bond. And so the order will be arachidonic and then gaetic and then capric acid. And that corresponds then to answer D. So the answer for number 35 is going to be D. So that was questions 32 to 35 of unit 10 of the Green Booklet. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.